Blessings. I'm gospel recording artist appointed. Please stay tuned for Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show, created and hosted by Apostle John E. Ross. Trying to do what's right, but it does.
Father, this is my petition and my prayer unto you that you will have all of me. Ladies and gentlemen, Lady Gina Thurston. I've been captured. I've been captured. By your love. By your love. And I've been saved. I've been saved. By your grace. By your grace. I am sure. In my heart, I know there's been a change. I know that there's been a change. Oh. Won't let me down. Won't let me down. Won't let me fall. Won't let me fall. You promised to be, promised to be there through it all. There through it all. I owe you all love. And I owe you I all give love. You all me. love me. Won't let me down. Let me down.
Blessings and greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. I am your radio apostle, Apostle John E. Ross, creator and host of this podcast, lead minister and founder of the Omega International Prophetic Ministries, and thank you for tuning in for this special episode dedicated to the birth of Jesus, our Christ our King and Messiah. Kingdom, our guests for this episode are Prophet and Apostle Darren L. Williams and Bishop Herman Jackson. Kingdom and listening audience, the date of the birth of baby Jesus is declared in Luke the second chapter and the first verse, which declares Jesus was born when Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Jesus was born the year Herod died. Bishop Herman Jackson, please. Teach us and give us a word from the Lord as God the Holy Spirit has revealed to you not only about the birth of Jesus, but the timing of his birth as it relates to us in today's society and in the kingdom of God. Well, blessings, blessings, and more blessings, my brother, uh, Apostle Johnny Ross. I'm so happy uh, to be your guest here today, along with uh, Prophet Apostle uh, Darren L. Williams. Uh, We're going to hear from him, and so I just honor these two great men of God. My name is Bishop Bishop Herman H. Jackson. I am the senior pastor at Ark of Safety Apostolic Faith Temple Church and CEO of Herman H. Jackson Ministries. And so we're going to go directly into the topic that's at hand. And that topic that is at hand is first and foremost the birth of Jesus. Now, Jesus' earthly mother uh, was Mary, and she was a virgin. And Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Uh, And so Jesus did not have an earthly father, but only a heavenly father. And so we move another time. Uh, We move to the fact that um, although Jesus had natural tendencies in this earth because he was born of a woman, he had a supernatural mindset and divinity because uh, Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. And so now we go and we talk about the timing. Jesus' timing, the birth of Jesus' timing. The birth, the birth of Jesus' timing, the birth uh, was prophesied, and so the timing goes toward the prophecy, because it had already been prophesied many thousands of years before Jesus uh, was born that he should be born. And the prophet began to write and said, for unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor. Mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And so the timing of Jesus' birth had very little to do with man and had everything to do with the thoughts of God. And so before Jesus was, God had already thought about the timing in which Jesus would be born. And isn't that just like the God we serve? Um, and yeah. I just want to make this life application here uh, in its weakest form, and that's my disclosure. And that's my disclosure to those that can hear me. And that is, God knows what we need, and He knows when we need it. And so yeah. I just want to take the time to talk to somebody and to tell you that God knew we needed Jesus, and He sent Him to us right on time. And yeah. so, if, Jesus, if God could be sensitive enough to know that we needed a Savior, He definitely can be sensitive enough to know uh, if you need a refrigerator or if you need a microwave or if you need a little bit more money in your pocket. You should know that God will never leave you, neither will he forsake you. Because if he loved us enough to send us us a redeemer, uh, he definitely loves us enough to provide our everyday natural needs. 
And so then we move again from the timing and prophecy uh, to how Jesus' birth relates to the kingdom of God. And so when we look at the kingdom of God issue, we must look at reconciliation. Because what we lost in Adam, we gained in Jesus. Because Jesus is also named the second Adam. And so we were left outside of the kingdom of God because of sin. And although God is a graceful God, and although God is a loving God, and although God is an omniscient God, uh, he's also a righteous God. And so it was our sin that separated us from God. And so when God thought about us originally, he thought about us as, an, as extensions of him uh, in its weakest form because God is a spirit. And so now when we look at it another time, we must look at the fact uh, that God says, I will redeem man or reconciliate man back to me. And this is where the kingdom of God comes in. And so when we pray, we pray, Lord, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And so when we pray, we pray God's kingdom here. And then in the book of Revelation, John the Revelator says, I see another heaven, a new heaven, and a new earth coming down. And so he's seeing the kingdom of God come to this earth as it is in heaven. And so now we find two uh, how does Jesus' birth relate to the kingdom of God? Jesus' birth um, have reference to the kingdom of God because Jesus was born as our Redeemer. It is because we have the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus, and um, it is our person who stands in the gap for our sins. Uh, it is what Jesus did on Calvary after he was born that gives us rights back into the kingdom of God, their son. And so someone who is lost because of sin does not have to stay lost because once we yield to the power of God and accept the Lord as our personal Savior, now we are no longer out of the kingdom, but we are into the kingdom. And then finally, it relates to us because not only can we be saved here in this earth, but Jesus redeems us to something, and then re Jesus redeems us from something. All right, so let's talk about the to and the from. Jesus redeems us to God, the Father, because what we lost in Adam, we regained in Jesus. And then here on the earth, he redeems us from something. We're dealing with a pandemic now. And fear runs rampage throughout the earth. But when you have Jesus, you don't yeah. have to fear because you have the Redeemer on the inside of you. The Bible said God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so now he's redeeming somebody from fear right now. Yeah. Even as the podcast begin to go, Hallelujah. you were afraid about dying. You were afraid of, of about catching this uh, disease. You were afraid about the stability of your finances. You were afraid about your family being safe. But because we know who Jesus is, now we don't have to fear. Now, I didn't say go and recklessly put yourself in danger, but I am saying that we don't have to fear because fear is a spirit. And Jesus is a spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. And when that spirit of fear comes to you and say you're going to die or your family is unsafe, you can tell that spirit, that evil spirit, the blood of Jesus. When yeah. that spirit tells you that you're not going to make it, you can say again, the blood of Jesus. When that spirit tells you another time that your finances are getting low because you have not been able to work because of this pandemic, you can tell that devil, the Lord shall supply all of my needs Hallelujah. according to his riches in glory. And so this is how it relates to us. His birth relates to us in the earth because we have no fear. We have no poverty. We have no lack. And then finally, we do not lack revelation because revelation is the revealing of God. And because we know who he is, then we act like we know who he is. We walk like we know who he is. We talk like we know who he is. And I know I'm talking to somebody right now that you were feeling a little shaky. 
And I've come to tell somebody today, don't feel shaky no more because we've got Jesus. We have our Redeemer. We have our, we have our propitiation that has already reunited us with God. And so we lack nothing. And I think David said it best in the 23rd Psalms. He said, for the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. And I come to tell you, if you're wanting anything, it's because you're not going to your shepherd, because he is our shepherd. He is our guide. He is our way out of no way. He is our food when we're hungry. He is our comforter in sorrow. Whatever you may be feeling right now, I come to tell you it's not over until God says it's over. And I hear God says a cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him. And it's because we have Jesus and in this birth, this immaculate birth. Amen. Now we have that same Jesus that was born of a Virgin Mary down on the inside of us. And so God bless everyone. I, I hope that you got something from that here. And now we're going to say back to Apostle Johnny Ross, our host. God bless you. Amen. Amen and amen again. Kingdom, our relationship with God through Jesus is so crucial in this season and in every season to come. Amos 3 and 7 declares, For the Lord God does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. I believe that God has a specific word for us as it relates to the birth of his son that is relevant and life-changing for us in this season and in the seasons to come. Prophet and Apostle Darren L. Williams. Bethlehem has been the subject of countless Christmas carols and nativity scenes, but the real story of this little town is far more complex. Bethlehem had a history before it became known as the site of the birth of baby Jesus. Right now, it sits at the heart of the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. Prophet Apostle William, speak to us that are in relationship with Jesus about the struggles we face or have faced as we journey forward to Christ Jesus' return. Definitely. First and foremost, I want to say to you, thank you for this invitation. I'm certainly honored to be with you and uh, the man of God. Uh, first and foremost, uh, one of the things I discovered time of research concerning this question, I noted that the name Bethlehem uh, in its Arabic uh, meaning, uh, it was defined as the house of meat. Uh, this place, Bethlehem, is actually stationed, um, well, it's situated uh, in the West Bank um, in reference to Judea and uh, five miles south of Jerusalem. And we understand how significant Jerusalem is to the prophecies that have been released concerning God's people. Yeah. And to to go backwards, sometimes to understand what God is saying, we have to we have to visit uh, some places of old. And this is the only time that God really uh, endorses us to look back at the past for the reference of what we're looking at now. Sometimes we can't understand what's happening now because we didn't trace what happened back then. Yeah. And this is how God positions uh, us to break us out of generational curses, how God positions us to reposture ourselves to walk into divine destiny or to play our part in the, the plan, the grand scheme of God. However, when I looked at this, the question that was posed to me was, uh, is, 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 Jeru sorry, is uh, Bethlehem sits uh, in a matter of a position between the war that we would say the battle that we have today, uh, Israel and the Palestinians are fighting. The meaning of Bethlehem in the Arabic uh, place, house of meat, shows a place not just of dwelling, but it also represents a place of nourishment. And also spiritually, when we begin to take these words and we ride into the spirit with them, based upon biblical reference, we find ourselves seeing the significance of the place not by the physical, but by the spiritual. Bethlehem is centered in a position not so far from Jerusalem uh, due to the fact that God wants this place to be sancti sanctified uh, in view, referencing the beginning, 
because we understand generally we know that Bethlehem is the place where Jesus was born. And, of course, he could have been born anywhere else, but he was born in Bethlehem, establishing the fact that there is going to be a shift if the body of Christ is birthed into the earth realm. Of course, we know we come through Jesus, but there's going to be a shift. It was a prophecy. There's going to be a shift of familiarity. Uh, you're going to move from what you know to what you don't know. And it's in what you don't know that the kingdom, the kingdom mandate is going to be established. And that's why I believe Jesus was born in Bethlehem. It was a place that was not uh, noted for great religious, religious beliefs. It's noted now because of his birth. It was a no. It was it was a it was a no a no a no place. It was it had no name, had no purpose. But now it does because of the birth. I'm trying to tie this down. Bear with me. So as yeah. I begin to look at the question, you asked me to parallel and to show the significance to our relationship with Christ Jesus and the struggles we face as we journey to the, to the return of Christ, I note that the battle that Israel has with the Palestinians concerning uh, these grounds, and even Bethlehem being right there in the middle, shows the spiritual battle that we have when the flesh and the spirit war over the territory of our mind. Bear with me. Because this is a place of birthing. And just like Bethlehem was a place of birthing for the Messiah, and I want to and I want to ride right there for a second with Messiah. I don't want to say Jesus right now. The reason I don't want to say Jesus right now is because the name of Jesus, that name that would be above all other names, that name would not have been legitimate enough to save nobody if the person who born Hallelujah. had not been born in adversity, had not been born in a place of 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 of, of no uh, of no how can I say of no reputation. So he had to, he, and, and, that's, and that's the reason he had to come through where he came through. I know, and I'm, I'm trying not to move to the other question that later on going to be given, but what I'm saying is, is that it's, it's the fact that he was burnt there. That was a prophecy to us. God was saying that no matter where you're burnt, I'm coming for you. Your yeah. purpose is going to be fulfilled through you. But I need you to understand not to hate that place, but to honor, honor that place even though he was born in a place of, of, of discomfort in the end. And I'm going to try not to get, get into the other thing, but i got to say this for establishing a, a, a point here. He was put in a predicament, his, his purpose being released in the earth, where he did not have um, I say comfort. He did not have uh, a, a great, um, great riches or wealth. This scenario painted a picture that even down to nobody, you are nobody. Nobody. Yeah. It don't matter now, because of your purpose, your purpose, if you yield to it and, and through the plan of God, it's going to usher you into your destiny. It's going gonna, it's gonna to bring you to the platform of the performance of your, of your divine purpose. That's what happened here when I looked at uh, Bethlehem. And God is just basically saying, he's saying, I'm going to take a nobody and make them somebody. And I'm going to use you to fulfill my, my plan of redemption by sending you to a place that nobody has come from, that's not popular because people, you know, because a, a, a well-known person came from. It's going to be popular because it represents a new birth. It represents not only a new birth, but it represents a birth that's going to multiply. Yeah. And so I, I, couldn't, I couldn't talk about this without, without just sitting on the conflict of Israel with the Palestinians concerning uh, the, the, the place. Of, Beth- of Bethlehem because, again, it's the birthing place. But if we don't understand the significance of the place, the, the power of that place won't be able to manifest in our life. And that's a prophetic thing, too, because what that means is, is that so many people who are in places, they don't understand why they're there. Yes. And if you don't watch it, you'll begin to prof- compare your, your place to other people's place. But it makes no sense to do that because your purpose ain't everybody else's purpose. Yes, preach And so that's why that's why he had to be born where he was born. He had to be he had to be born in that place to make a transition for other people. I thank God for Bethlehem, because Bethlehem proved to me that if I was born in a project, that don't mean my in my life going in in a project. Bethlehem yeah. means if my family might have started in in New York, 
All right, but that don't mean that that's where my that's where that's where my life gonna end. If, if my family might have never nobody in my family might have ever graduated and got a diploma, but that don't mean that's gonna be my end. I have to understand that my Bethlehem, my beginning place, marks the place of a birthing of of of, of promise that has not been manifested yet. Okay, the vessel is manifested. The possibility has hit the earth, but the purpose and the fulfillment, the happening. I like to say that when I deal with manifestation, the happening of me, the happening of my call, that doesn't come into flourishing until after I come in a total obedience and, and, and submission and, and reverence of God, his identity, his power, his nature, his divine providence. And that's why I said I want to deal with Messiah and not Jesus, because the, the name Jesus describes the Savior, the Messiah name is Jesus. But the work is, is important at this point. And this is, what, this is something that I was meditating on yesterday came to my spirit, that when God loosed Jesus into the earth realm, you know, when the angel greeted Mary, and uh, the angel began to talk to Mary about what she was going to, you know, carry, and he said, I'll bless you all. It did not, she didn't get pregnant until she accepted. Now remember, she has the ability to carry. She's been birthed to carry, but she doesn't get pregnant and carry that thing until she accepted it. But this is the thing. She agreed to the sound. The angel spoke the will of the Lord. She agreed to the sound, and then she said, be it unto me. I'm your handmaid. In other words, I'll carry what you have released in my ears. So what she got in her ears and pregnated her womb, a supernatural transaction transaction happened. That was a divine yes from her and a divine loose from God. And she, was, and, yeah. she was, and she conceived. Now, with that being said, the delivery process is a whole other fact because where she was, she could not give birth to him. She had to give birth in an unfamiliar place because that's what's going to happen, and that's going to be the pattern for the rest of all who will come after her. Those who would receive the word of God, those who would accept the, the identity of Christ, they would have to give birth in inconvenient situations and, and unforeseen circumstances. It has to be a mindset that, that it's not about what I know and what's nice and what's comfortable. It's about inconvenience. I have to allow inconvenience to become my place of birthing, my place of delivery. And I got to be okay with that. The body of Christ where we are now, and I heard many guys speak about the pandemic that we're dealing with. This is the epitome of the conditions that Mary faced when she was born into labor with Jesus. She was in an uncomfortable place. She was in a place that she would have not chosen. She was forced, catch this, she was literally forced to deliver what she was pregnant with. It didn't matter uh, where she wanted to be. She had to be where he wanted to be, where God wanted her to be. And the, the fact, even to the fact, the point that she couldn't get room nowhere, that she had to go to a manger and a manger and deliver her baby out you know, in a dirty place. That's God showing us that the place that I designed for you to give birth is not going to be what you want it to be, but it's going to be essential to those who are going to hear the story of what you carry and reference how you got it and, and how you delivered it in spite of the challenges that you faced. She didn't have a doctor there. She didn't have a, a computer there. She didn't have a bunch of nurses. All she had was her husband, who the baby was in for, and then later, after she delivered, strangers that came to honor the baby. This was not about Mary. This was about God. This was about the plan of God to reconcile man back to himself. And that, and, and that in itself is what blew my mind. The fact that God knew that he couldn't just drop salvation from heaven. He had to put salvation in a body. So the plan of God to reconcile man back to God, because and, and this is the whole point of Jesus, the whole point of, of the Messiah, the word Christ means Savior. He released a plan that he had to, he had to release in the, into the earth out of the spirit, and he could not undo his own word, his own law. And that's the, that, that was the intricate part, because rather people believe it or not, God is legalistic. That's why even the devil operates according to, come on, the legalism of the kingdom of heaven. All powers are subject to the greatest power. So even God himself had to honor his own word. That's why Jesus had to come. He had to send himself. And that's crazy. But at the sin itself, into the flesh, 
and allow it to and, and allow himself to live as a man to infiltrate the earth realm to birth out the salvation. The process of salvation had to be approved, not just by God, but it had to be approved by the government that God put in place. The earth realm is a kingdom. It's a kingdom that functions simultaneously under the, con- under the constraint and the rulership of the kingdom of heaven. But this realm is set that it can only receive or conceive based upon divine authority and divine order. And so when I'm coming back to Bethlehem, Bethlehem is the place where the thing that was conceived was birthed. It happened. And what happened that day set the course for what would happen for, rest, for the rest of all mankind after his name was given, after, his, after he was raised, after he lived all those years, and he had to go to the cross. This all started in Bethlehem, the place where strategically he had no name. They had no house. They were broke. If, if most would say that because there was no inn, they could stay in. It just it happened in a natural environment. That's what God is about to do with us. He's about to take us in a place that we've never been, and he's about to cause us to give birth to what we said we believe is God and we believe is divine. But it's gonna it's gonna happen in a, an uncomfortable place, an uncomfortable position. And prophetically, it's going to be a place of war. And it starts in us, and then it's going to come out of us. It was a personal thing she gave birth to, a baby that came out of her. But once the baby came out of her, the baby was no longer for her. That's why the kings came to honor him. Because the thing that was in her from the get-go was always the, the plan of God. to produce salvation in the earth for man. So that's what I got when you asked me that. When, when that question was posed to me, about the significance of Bethlehem, I thought it is the house of meat. It's, it's, it's the place that purpose is fed, weaned, and it's, it's pushed out. It's the beginning. And I hope I was able to shine some, some light into, um, into, what, into your question. I hope it was sufficient for you. Back to your hands, Apostle. Amen, amen, and amen again. Mary and Joseph settled down on the hay in a stable with animals sleeping. Mary went into labor, and our Savior was born in the stable. The only place for our Savior to sleep was most likely in the animal's trough, known as the manger. During this time, an angel appeared to the shepherds who were watching their flocks in the field near Bethlehem. The angel told them the good news of the Savior and the Messiah's birth. The shepherds are symbolic of pastors. They immediately went to find baby Jesus, which the angels told them they would find them sleeping in the manger. Prophet Williams used this same case scenario, and let us know why is it not just important but mandatory that we find Jesus in today's society. Certainly. It is mandatory because Jesus, after he, he established all that was established, his birth being of a divine nature, he was born of a virgin, which represents a super a super supernatural origin. He had the Bible said Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. I am the way. That bridge from the heavens to the earth is Jesus. He is. It is Jesus. And the reason he had to be named was that man would have confession rights. If we were to go in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9, he says, we say, a man must believe in his heart. And, you know, and confess him about the Lord Jesus and that he was raised from the dead and he shall be saved. A lot of people misunderstand the word saved. Saved don't just mean rescued. Saved also means given the opportunity to protect and to give birth to what's in them. It ain't just our life that's saved. It's the purpose of our life that's saved. Now, when we look at uh, at the establishment that Jesus uh, so, so wonderfully set. He lived supernaturally. 
he died and he rose from the grave supernaturally. There we find the, compa- the comparison with those who are dead spiritually. Okay, I'm going to do this, and, and, I, and I hope I just don't take it about it too far from the subject, because it won't, but it's very essential that we, that we establish this. Remember, the Bible says that Lazarus was dead. Okay, he was sick. It's not letters, it's not news to Jesus. He said, your friend's sick. He said, okay. He waited until Lazarus died. And then he told the disciples, he said, now, we're going to go and we're going to see our, our brother. We're going to see our brother, yeah. And he said, yeah, he's asleep. And they really, at first they really didn't just get it. He had to come back and make a plan. He said, he's dead. I can just imagine how they look. He's dead? And you said, we're going to see our brother. Well, we're going to see a cart. But you said he was asleep. Make your mind up, Jesus. Said, no, 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 no. Y'all don't understand what I understand because y'all looking natural. I'm looking supernatural. So he says, let's go. And it was so wonderful. He took the journey. He was confident. He took the journey. And when he got there, the Bible said Lazarus had been dead in the tomb for four days. And one of the sisters, uh, while the other one was still home weeping, one of the sisters of Lazarus came and greeted Jesus. And he came, and she thought he came to console her. But he didn't come to console us. He came to, to reaffirm the supernatural power of God in the earth. So he says, so she, so he, he, he says to her, you're going to see your brother again. She said, well, I know in, in that day, that great day. And no, 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 no. He says, no. He says, I am the resurrection. And she didn't understand it because she was, even though she had knowledge of him, she didn't have knowledge of the spirit world. And so she didn't see a way. She saw a person. I hope y'all catch what I'm about to say. Yeah. I said she didn't see a way. She saw a person. And so she, uh, she, she immediately went for, for comfort from a person, but he didn't come to comfort her as a person. He came, to, and he came to inform them of a way that they didn't know. That's why the miracle had to happen. I'm still, I'm still connecting this. Bear with me. So watch this. So the Bible says, he said, show me where he is. So after, the, after he said, I'm the resurrection, there was, much, there was not much dialogue. Because she still was in limbo. She didn't understand. Okay, so they go to the tomb. He said, roll a stone away. Everybody looking at him like you're crazy. He said, roll a stone away. They roll a stone away. And Jesus says, uh, first of all, I want to take this note. He, first of all, he weeps. He weeps. Now, he weeps. And some people think he weeps. And some of them on side say he weeps because of how he loved Lazarus. No, no, no. Not to say he didn't love her, but that wasn't the point. The point was he was weeping because of their unbelief. And you got to understand, that's what made him grieve. The fact that he was the way and they didn't know he was the way. He told her, I'm the resurrection. She still didn't get it. So all of a sudden, the miracle happened. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Now watch this. It was not the human person that called Lazarus. It was the divine nature of God in, in that body that demanded death to lose Lazarus. And the Bible says the dead man came out. He came walking out of the tomb. What did that do to them? That immediately made them look at Jesus another way. Here it is. That's why we have to look at Jesus. That's why he came. That's why he had to be born of a virgin. He had to do supernatural things because we had to get off of his, off of his, off of his personality as a person, and we had to get in his power as a way. He's the bridge. He's the gap. He came to reconcile man back to God. And that's why miracles, signs, and wonders are following those who believe now. We must walk in faith. We must, we must stand boldly, even in a time like this, even during a pandemic, and declare the truth and the knowledge of God. And why? Because we are pregnant with a glory. That's what we have. We're like Mary. We're pregnant with a glory. And like Mary had to get to Bethlehem to deliver that thing, a place unexpected, but she knew she accepted the will. That's what we got to do. And as we do that as the leaders, then those around us, they can then begin to partake of what we carry it. Because the funny thing about this pregnancy is like Mary was pregnant with, the, with, the, with deliverance for the world. Now that, that same thing that she was pregnant with, it came forth and he died. And most people don't pay attention to it. When he was on the cross, the Bible said that they broke the legs of those who were on the cross, right? They came yeah. to break his legs and he could not because the prophecy said, you know, that, 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 his, that his bones couldn't be, it wouldn't be broken. It couldn't be broken. So what they did is they scourged him in the side. Blood and water gushed out. This is essential. Because that is the place. And a lot of people don't understand. They think it was when the apostles began to go forth and structuring the church and the kingdom. No, no, no. The, the church was birthed when Jesus was, when Jesus was poked. When they pierced him in the side, the water and blood gushed out. 
He should have been dehydrated. That shouldn't have even happened. But water and blood gushed out from his side, showing that the glory that was birthed in Mary is now giving birth. The word is giving birth to the way. The way is how, is, is how the church is going to grow, and the church is going to be birthed. We, as the people of God, we go back to this essential fact that Jesus is the way because that's how we cross over from the earth to the spirit. But this is it. Simultaneously, we're still alive, which brings me to Romans chapter 12. Brethren, it says, offer your bodies as a what? Living sacrifice. Boom! Here we go, sacrifice. Living sacrifice. That means your body is not dead, but the character, the freedom of it does. Because you submit yourself to the will of God, whereas it's coming from the source of soul, not flesh. A redeemed soul comes through Jesus, the Messiah, the one who came to save, not just the person, but to save the assignment. I, I hope I'm not going too deep. What I'm saying is, is that going back to Bethlehem, the place it began, Mary carried Jesus. Uh, uh, Jesus, sorry, Mary gave birth to Jesus. Then we cross over to Jesus living and being raised as a normal person, but having supernatural abilities. We come to this place now where the world needs to see that if we don't go through Jesus, there ain't no other way. Ain't no other way. That's why even Paul said, he said, for some of these religious people, he said, the God, he said, I preach Jesus crucified. He said, something, to some it was a stumbling block. You know, in other words, he was saying they were on a natural kick. They were on a natural kick. But it was a spiritual thing. He said, but to those who believe, it's the power of God. What do you mean? In other words, it's a li- in that message, I get liberated because it reminds me that how I'm living is not natural means. How I'm living is by supernatural means. I'm here not because, because I got good health. I'm here because I'm assigned and I yield it to the assignment. So my salvation, the struggle I have as a person that saved the day, is I got to continue to remind myself that he's the only way out. Yeah. He's the light. The re- he's the resurrection. And if I start doubting that, I go back to the state of being a carnal man, which means I become a victim of what's around me. The Bible says this clearly. The Bible says we, 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 they that walk after the flesh, you're going you're to produce of the flesh. But they that, they that are of the spirit, you're going to produce of the spirit. What we're after determines what we produce. We can only give what we got. We are, we are what we eat. And so when we, when we bathe in the presence of God and, and we partake of the worship and we study the word and we listen to others who are of the faith, we are reaffirming the belief system that Christ put in place, the liberation, the power, the authority, and the demonstration of kingdom in earth. That's why I believe his name had to be put in place so we can call on him and confess him. Because after that comes the remission of sins, which means his blood blots out what you know the judgment we should have got and then after that comes the performance of the purpose there's a lot of believers who don't mind repenting there's a lot of believers who don't mind denying jesus but where are the believers that's going to say you know what i see he was the way but why did he come as the way he came as the way not only for me just to be rescued but he came as the way for me to produce what i'm pregnant with I'm going to stop right here because I, I can go, I can really go in. But what I'm saying, I, I'm just, I'm on that step that, that I want that part established that the, the, the struggle we face is because we don't want to lose us. And that's the problem. He, if he's away, that means there's a plan with him, but his plan will interrupt ours. That's why Mary was so messed up, but she, but she still gave birth. God knew, what, God knew what he wanted Jesus to be born. He knew them ends was going to be closed. He knew there was going to be a problem. But that's what he wanted them at. Can we be okay with what God wants us to be and still produce? And then afterwards, will we allow what we produce to mature and to come into full flourishing of the kingdom's plan? You know, so I'm going to digress right here. (laughs) I hope I was able to bring light into what you were asking, man of God, back into your hands, Apostle Ross. Amen, amen, and amen again. Kingdom, Jesus, the Son of the living God, born into a sinful world, 
governed by Satan and his fallen angels as a innocent child whose government leaders were seeking to kill him before he had a chance to live and to grow. Jesus born in some of the worst living conditions and yet to face a horrific death on the cross of Calvary, but yet remained obedient. Prophet Williams, what does this tell us of the character of our Lord? It tells us that he's loving, that he's compassionate, and that he is totally, totally smitten by us. There's one writer that said, who are, who are me? What is man? That God, you are mindful of us. We're nobody. Yes. But I believe what attracts God to us is that he's in us. He created man with a free will. Going back all the way to the book of Genesis, that same will got us in trouble. But I believe at the same time, too, it was the significance of the purpose of man, which was to have fellowship with God. That caused God to set a system and a plan in place that would cause us to be able to come back to him by choice. And that's what makes us different from angels. We have the choice, and we have the opportunity to be saved from ourselves, from our destruction, to be with him. And I believe that's what God wants from us. He wants to worship us. He told the woman, the Samaritan, yeah. my God, I'm Hallelujah. about to break running. He told the Samaritan at the well. They, came to the, they both came to the well. He was there first. She came, and she said, you don't, you're not even supposed to be talking to me. You know, I'm a Samaritan. I'm a mixed breed. And that's what I thank God for. Because what he did with her, he was displaying that he is not a respecter of person. I come to break your tradition. I come to break the laws of, of, of separation and racism and prejudice. He said, I come to deal with the spirit, not the flesh. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what your last name is. It don't matter where you were born. I want you. I've been wanting you. This ain't nothing new, but I got to show you. So I got to introduce my, my presence to you in the body. And that's what he did. And the Bible says that he established something with the woman after they went back and forth. I'm fast forwarding for time, y'all, about the water. Okay? She's saying, where your cup at? You came for water, but I don't see your cup. And then he said, no, if you knew where I was or what I was bringing, you'll be asking for what I got. He talked about that water so bad that she asked, I want it. Give me that water that's going to spring up in me, out of me. And he, and, she, and he said to her, go get your husband. And he said something. And listen, this is very powerful. He, t- he told us something he had an answer to already. That's how we know we were not just dealing with a person. We were dealing with God. And she said, well, I don't have a husband. And he said, you said, well, because of, you've had five husbands. And the man that's at, at your house right now, he's not your husband. All right? And then she said, sir, I perceive you're a prophet. She, he worked a miracle. I'm about to break off running. He how worked a miracle. That's a, that's a phenomenon. He went in her business without knowing her. My God from Zion. And the Bible says, she said, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. What happened when he worked the miracle is he changed her perception of him. Why was that important? Because once he changed her perception of who he was, then she became open for the message. My God from Zion. Because remember, she had purpose. Every soul has a purpose. I don't care who we are. Everybody got purpose. But when purpose is in a person who has not met truth, they can't birth it. And the Bible says, that when, 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 when he said, when, she, when he said what he said, she said, so I perceive you're a prophet, immediately she went to religious talk. She said, well, well your, your, some your people say this, and my people say that. Some say we worship in the city, while some people say we worship on the mountain. And Jesus said, let's just cut all this. Let's cut it all out. He said, the hour is coming where you ain't going to worship in the, on no mountain, or you ain't going to worship in no city. He said, because they that worship me, here we go. It's about to, I'm about to shift somewhere. They must worship me in spirit. Now, yes. I want you all to say that today, in spirit and in truth. Now, when he said in, that represents there has to be an access. In means that you are stepping from outside to, into, into another place. So how is he going to get there? How am I going to get there? Jesus, the way. Here we go again. The way. The way talking. But she don't know he's the way. And she don't know she needs this way because she's so busy defending, glory to God, religious talk. Because she don't even see that, she, that you come of water. He's trying to give you something that you never had, but you're so carnal and don't understand. Her mind was blinded. Paul talked about that, the blind mind. But that's why the miracles had to be wrought. So afterwards, when, when he got done, after he prophesied to her, notice the Bible says she ran back and told everybody. Sister girl became an evangelist. She became a carrier of good news because what happened is once he got in that space in her mind, he impregnated her 
with a manifestation. And yeah. immediately, an evangelist was triggered in her. How did it trigger? It triggered because she, she, she met him through a miracle. And so what I'm saying is, is that he loves us so much that so he'll come into our stuff and he'll rest there, even though we're undeserving of him. He'll rest there, even though we're not there uh, in, in mindset. We don't even know what we should know. But he said, I'm going to come in your stuff and I'm going to sit in your face. And I'm going to go back and forth with you with the strategic purpose of revelating you. I'm about to show you what I am and who I am so you can learn who you are. Notice. After, he, after she had the encounter, she ran as an evangelist. An evangelist was burnt out of an encounter. I'm about to break out running. Yes. But it came as a fruit of his passion for her. He knew, and then also, too, he knew if he got her, he was going to get everybody connected to her. So he gave her a personal encounter. And that's what I believe he's doing with most of us. And even now in the world, globally, God is giving personal encounters. I believe it. If somebody died lost, now you're choosing to die lost. Because God is revealing himself, even through this pandemic, even through economical disaster, even through relationship struggles, even through afflictions in bodies, even through relationships falling apart, marriages, divorce, high rates, suicide counts going up. He's still showing himself. We, don't, we, don't, we ain't going to have no excuse when he comes back. So, so that's why I, 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 that's what I, 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 I'm just I'm stuck on him. I'm stuck on him because he just continues to keep showing this. I'm gonna say like my mama say, he keep he keep proving himself over and over again. We don't got no excuse. All of the marriages better get ready because he's coming for us. The mixed breed, the rejection, and prophet. Prophet, mm-hmm. I have to jump in right here. What Go does Jesus' character say about us or to us? What it says, number one, is we got to stop thinking we're right. All, everybody, we got to come to the point where we are willing to know we don't have it all. And, more, and, nine, and, 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 and nine times out of ten, we have, we have not even hit or begin to understand the weight of who we really are. We're blind. And that's why he's showing us him. So it stands to us, don't trust you no more. That's why we need to be seeking his will. I'm about to take off right. We need to be seeking his will. Because if we seek his will, then he's going to reveal to us the power and the weight of the purpose that's in us. And, and then, and that, so, so the message is saying to us, I love you, and, I'm in, I, and I put something in you, and I want what's in you to come out. I want to use you the way I want to use you. But I just need you to go ahead and surrender and submit to my will and to my way. That's, that's what he's saying. And it also testifying, too, that he's not an unjust God. A lot of people think, oh, the things God has done, people have died. Crimes have been raised. And a lot of, that's one of the biggest issues we face with evangelizing the people. They want to know, well, if he's such a good guy, why did that, that happen? But, but, but the point is this. They don't understand sin. That I've, I've been there. We don't understand the, 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 the law, of the, the spiritual laws, principles, because we don't know God. And so we begin to misunderstand who he is. Because we really look around, the old song the church would say, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. Well, you yeah. would say, well, there's more bad days than good days, so how could it outweigh? No, you're misunderstanding. He's not saying there's more good days than bad days. He's saying, although I got more bad days than good days, the good days are so glorious. Till I learn to live in that even though I'm going through. Because what I've done now is I've learned to shift into the spirit world because the way has been made. Now, even though my body is sick, my mind is healed. Even though my marriage is falling apart, my mind is soul. It, it's solid. Even though my money ain't right and my change is strange, I'm, I'm, I'm still all right because now I'm in a state of peace. That go that access. That go that way. And that, and, that, and that testifies to me that I am somebody. If he done did all this and went out the way for me, he done died on the cross, and he's still fighting for me, giving me chance after chance, I am somebody. He's teaching me to value myself, but most importantly, he's teaching me to respect and value him. That's what I get. That's what, that's, what, that's, what, that's what he's revealing to us. That's what I believe. Amen, amen, and amen again. Kingdom, he came to show us and teach us relationship with God. So, prophet, how do we man up and how do we measure up to his expectations? I love that question. I love that question. Because first I want to say this. When we use how do we man up and, 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 and come up to it? First of all, 
we have to realize that God don't want the man. He don't want the man. He's not looking for the he's not looking for the natural. And what I love about that is is a testimony is a testimony to us that measuring up to the to the purpose and the will of God is not something we can do in our flesh. Yes. When we deal with that man part, we deal with natural. We but when we when we really begin to deal with God, we got to go spiritual. And that's the point. That goes back again. That goes back to the way. Because now I got Jesus. I got I got a way. I got a way to be clean from my sins, the blood. And I got a, I got a door. I can go into the spirit world. So now I got to learn how to walk spirit, not natural. So as, I, as, as you say, man up, I think we should shift it, and I think we should say, cut this up. Because that's what he wants. He wants the purpose to come. He wants the purpose to talk. He wants the purpose to be fulfilled. And so I definitely believe now that goes into the intensity of our seek. My God, I've been saying this now for the last three years. Somebody lost their seek while somebody else never found it. We got to get to a seek. We got to get to the, because the Bible said there was that hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be, they, they, they shall be filled. There is a seek that got to hit us. Now, I'm, I'm about to go, y'all. I'm, uh, oh, there's a seek. Jesus, God, there's a seek that got to hit us. And that seek got to supersede any other seek. Oh, I know you might be a mama, but you still got to go seeking to be a servant. You might be a husband, but you got to go seeking to be a servant. You might be a business owner, CEO of a company, a pastor, a bishop, but you got to have a seek. And that's what even some of the leaders, the spiritual leaders, we got to have a seek. When the seek expires or the seek diminishes, that's when the power begins to go away. And we go back to being dead in the mind, unproductive, unfruitful, and not yeah. producing. And so that's that. that that, that, that when we say the, the, man, the man of, I'm telling you, I believe we have to go back to that seeking and that chasing after God, oh my God, and just getting lost in him, getting wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up. Because the deeper we get in God, and this is why the enemy don't want that, the deeper we get in God, the, the clearer the mission becomes. And the more powerful, my God, the, the, the execution plan begins. It begins to manifest. We got to go back to that broken place. They're coming down off of our pride. They're eating the ground a little bit, laying on our belly, calling on him, weeping. I tell people now, stop expressing yourself to people. Although they may love you, they don't have the ability to take what you got in your out you. But if you will go to God and just lay before his prayer and weep and talk to him, that's when that's because that's when we're gonna that's when we gonna not only we're gonna purpose up, we're gonna we're gonna spirit up. Our soul, my God, our soul will oh, start talking. Yes, Lord. And when our soul talks, that's what, that's, what, that's what the earth realm looking for. The Bible says that the earth is moaning and groaning and travailing for the sons and daughters of God. Well, who are the sons and daughters of God? Those who are born again. My God, I'm about to go. I'm about to go running through this field, y'all. The sons and daughters of God to be, bro- to be born again. That the ones who are born again. And as we are birthed, that means we're not walking in natural. We're walking in supernatural. And that's why even to the point, something simple is animals. Animals didn't fear. Animals didn't attack man in Genesis. But now they attack man. In, in this time, because yeah. the divine sanctity and the holiness, the reverence for God that was in place, it's been violated. So now where we are now, I believe we're coming to that place where our seeking is going to overpower our, my God, our thinking, and it's going to cause us to walk in supernatural authority and dominion. And as a result of that, we're going to be able to stir it up. <laughs> Amen. We're gonna be able to produce what he's calling for us to do. I hope that I hope that was a good response, man of God. I hope it was. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And as we are winding down, Prophet Williams, Amen. How do we follow his example until he returns? Well, I spoke about the seeking, but with the seeking comes the rule of submitting. Submitting to what we're seeking after is what's going to help us stay in sync. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, now remember Acts chapter 1, Jesus had already, uh, you know, he had been raised from the dead, and he had went around, he, he showed himself. The Bible said he, was, he had worked miracles. But Acts chapter 1, the Bible shows us clearly that he, 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 he showed himself for the last time. And the Bible said angels came to take him up. And he told them, I want you to stay in Jerusalem and wait for the promise. He said, you, 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 you know, you've heard of me and things of like that. But he said, but 
And he said, John baptized the water. I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Okay. What should I say at this time? Fire. They didn't totally understand everything he said, but they obeyed. Here's, here's the key component, my God, for us to stay into it, to us to stay ready when he comes. I'm about to take off running. He, he is coming. He is coming. But what we need is the indwelling and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is going to mess up some people right here because we, we believe, you know, we know tongues is, 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 is a manifestation of the feeling of the Holy Spirit. But I want us to move past that because devils can speak in tongues too. I yes. want us to focus on this. Allowing, are y'all ready for this? The Holy Spirit to inhabit our being. To allow the Holy Spirit yes. to inhabit our being. We must become the habitation of the Spirit of God. Now what that means is that not only are we stop saying we love him and we're going to serve him, not only are we seeking, but we are yielding. That go back to what I said. The seek got to turn into a yield. We seeking, but what we submit, what we come under, the rulership. And see, a lot of people, that's when the kingdom is birthed in the earth through us. Because when the world see we're not going their way, but we're going another way. Yeah. The question is, well, what way is he going? What way is she going? And our response is, we're going to Jesus' way. I'm about to break yeah. up running. Now I'm ready to say Jesus. I'm, I'm ready to say Jesus now because the world <laughs> needs a name to associate yeah. what's going on. Help me, God, today. So, so now we, you send the miraculous, but we got a name to attach with the miraculous. Because this is the work of the Messiah, the one that was born in Jerusalem. I'm sorry, born in Bethlehem. This is the work of the Messiah, the one who came from a virgin. This is the work of the Messiah, the one, glory to God, that, 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 that died on the cross and rose from the dead. He, became, he is the resurrection. All this is because of him. And this is when we begin, we begin to witness in our waiting. And I'm about to just be quiet now after this. In our waiting for his return. Because a lot of people say, oh, well, we've been waiting for him to return. And some people then died waiting for him to return. You've got to understand, God don't operate in the timing of man. Time is in God, not God in time. Man is subject to time. And the thing about God is this. He's the God of the past, the present, and of the future. His work is already done. He's given us the time to benefit and, and, and to take advantage of the amenity of salvation. And so the time is that we can sit and cultivate and do and become what we need to be in him. Okay? And birth and, bur and flourish in the purpose that he has set for our life. The relationship is going to require some sacrifices. It's going to require some changes. It's going to require, it's going to require some, some suffering, some submitting. This is what we do while we wait. This is what we do while we wait. We submit ourselves to the will of God. Excuse me, y'all. We submit ourselves to the will of God, and we trust him. And we know that all things, and that's what we must remember, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. And, and remember that. The will is included in that. We got to produce the will. And so all of it comes together. In our waiting, we must produce. We must give birth. Yeah. And, we, and we, must stay, we must stay in the seek. I hope I was able to answer that question. I got overly excited, y'all. And I started talking a little more because I got full. Amen. Amen. I hope that was it. <laughs> Bishop Herman Jackson, after all that has been said during this podcast, please give the final words and close our discussion about the birth of Jesus. But I can say that I've truly enjoyed Apostle Prophet uh, Darren L. Williams. Uh, there's not much to say. He has closed every door, every avenue, <laughs> everything that he said was completely Amen. on point. Yeah. And so he didn't he didn't leave any rubbish to be cleaned up in any form. I just think it was just such an honor. Uh, the only thing I want to say in closing is it's such an honor and a privilege to be able to uh, collaboratively speak the word of God with these two men of God. And I just hope that somebody, I know that somebody has already been blessed, um, their faith has been increased, and someone who may have been thinking about giving up, I know that their hearts were encouraged. And so now I'm going to say back to our host, Apostle Johnny Ross. God bless you. 
Amen. Kingdom, you may reach out to us at Let's Talk to the Lord at Yahoo.com and at our website, Let's Talk to the Lord Radio dot International. The worship music to celebrate our Savior's birth on this episode are O Come Emmanuel by Mike McCoy's Voices United. All of Me by Tyrone E. Block and LSD, and Whisper His Name by Billy Steele. Until next time, may God bless you, and may God keep you living your lives at the foot of the cross under a open heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
we fall down on our knees Oh Lord, I lift my hands to say you're all I need You're all I need Jesus.